Welcome to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Now, some sharp-eyed viewers, and certainly at least one person in the audience, may have noticed that I shaved off my mustache. <laughs> Last night, here's why. People are asking, why, where, where did the mustache go? Yeah. Well, there's a reason for everything we do here at The Late Show. It's all based on science. Last night, we did an ultra-scientific Twitter poll, and 71% said trash <laughs> the stash, okay? All right. But that's... That's just one data point. You can't go off of one data point. So later, uh, a CBS Stephen Colbert's wife poll <laughs> found that 100% of Evie did not like the stash. <laughs> she would not kiss me while I had it, so I shaved it off. Got my kiss. <laughs> Story has a happy ending, and they live happily ever after. Of course, these days you got to be careful who you kiss, thanks to the Delta variant, which currently accounts for 99% of COVID cases in the United States. And it's so well known that the CEO of the airline Delta has revealed he's still refusing to call it the Delta variant. That's important. I can totally understand that, because being associated with a communicable disease is not great for business. That's why stores no longer carry the tasty syphilis jam. <laughs> you remember their motto, nothing spreads like syphilis. <laughs> but... Ah. Mm. Mm. Ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's, new, there's a new variant in town, and it's called Mu, named after the 12th letter of the Greek alphabet, and not as a thought for the Pokemon Mu. <laughs> Either way, got to get vaccinated, or you'll catch them all. <laughs> Last week, the World Health Organization, yeah, yeah, Pikachu, Pokemon fans here tonight. <laughs> Last week, the World Health Organization designated Mu. A variant of interest. Okay, in the PR world, that's what we call buzz. Now, technically, a variant of interest is less dire than variant of concern, which is how Delta is categorized. The rating system goes variant of interest, variant of concern, variant of pants crapping, <laughs> sometimes called code brown, and finally, <laughs> variant of is there any more room on Jeff Bezos's penis rocket to escape the planet? In... In a press release, the WHO said that vaccines may not work against mu, explaining that the variant has properties to evade our immune system caused by a constellation of mutations, a constellation also known as the Big Downer. <laughs> but there is some good-ish news out there, in part because people are rattled by this Delta surge. 75% of U.S. adults have taken at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine, okay? People in this room. Everybody in this room, for instance. Okay? 70, 70, 75%, meaning this life-saving vaccine is just slightly more popular than me shaving off my mustache. <laughs> so far, so far, vaccines have only gone to adults and teens because they're not authorized for children under 12 until Pfizer figures out how to make Razzleberry vaccine roll-ups. <laughs> now, all of that was fine for COVID Classic because kids weren't really catching it. But thanks to Delta, pediatric cases are surging as students head back to school. That is not good. Because in addition to COVID, it's also cootie season. <laughs> I certainly hope everyone in this room has gotten their circle dot cootie shot. <laughs> or they could end up with a purple nurple. <laughs> but for college kids, Back to school means back to packed stadiums, and a lot of people are afraid college football games could become super spreader events. Mm -hmm. Here's the crowd from UNC Virginia Tech game this weekend that did not require vaccination and where almost no one was wearing a mask. <laughs> Personal foul. Failure to protect yourself and others. <laughs> Sets the country back five years, still fourth wave. <laughs> if there's one thing, yes, 
If there's one thing I know about show business is that sound guys really love when you use a whistle. <laughs> Someone is quitting in the control room right now. The Atlantic Coast Conference's tweet about the game unironically used the caption, absolute chills. Followed by absolute fever and absolute loss of taste and smell. But it's not just the ACC. The University of Iowa Stadium also does not require vaccines or masks. And here's the crowd waving at the hospital behind the stadium. <laughs> Hi, hospital! See you in two to 14 days! Oh. But these are college kids. I'm sure they're making good, healthy choices. <laughs> Let's check in on some actual fan footage from the Georgia Clemson game at last weekend's Duke Mayo Classic. See, that's responsible. That is a responsible choice. He was not sharing his gallon tub of mayonnaise with everyone, so he knows that it's not the COVID that's going to kill him. <laughs> and I got to say, it's tr truly humbling to watch because until I saw that video, I thought I was the whitest man in America. <laughs> All hail the new king of Caucasia. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's very much. That's. Mm, it's potpourri. It's very nice. <laughs> Thanks to man-made global warming, we've seen massive hurricanes, raging floods, and out-of-control forest fires. And that's just this week. We're all tenants of planet Earth. We are definitely not getting our security deposit back. <laughs> and it's not just our lives we're changing forever now, because a new report says that animals are shape-shifting in response to the climate crisis. Same here. <laughs> These aren't love handles, okay? <laughs> Before the sea levels rise, I'm growing my own water wings. <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> this stuff is scary, but, but why are we calling it shape-shifting? When a species adapts over time, there's a name. It's called evolution. Shape-shifting is when you see a bat, look away for a second, and then Dracula is standing there. <laughs> I've... I want to suck from a paper straw. <laughs> According, the idea of that joke is that Dracula is concerned about pollution. <laughs> According to the report, warm-blooded animals are changing their physiology to adapt to a hotter climate, in part by getting larger legs to better regulate their body temperature. Okay, that's upsetting, but it does mean that before the world ends, there's a chance we might get to see some sexy penguins. <laughs> But it's not just birds who are adapting. The author of this study pointed out that prominent appendages, such as ears, are predicted to increase, so we might end up with a live-action Dumbo in the not-so-distant future. Okay, I question this science. <laughs> because there already was a live-action Dumbo. <laughs> and just like climate change, all the computer modeling warned us it would be a disaster, and yet we did nothing to stop it. <laughs> But it's not all bad news. No. Today, Virginia removed the Robert E. Lee statue from its state capitol. Come on. Lee Circle, too. Jim, uh, Jim, let's go to the footage. The South did rise again and then was immediately lowered into the parking lot. <laughs> then a work crew began cutting it into pieces for transportation. It's like Lincoln said. A statue of Robert E. Lee divided against itself cannot stand, and that's okay with me. <laughs> and this removal from the Capitol, it's from the Capitol grounds, right? It's long overdue. But I do have one quibble. I understand taking down Lee, but why did they have to take down his horse, Traveler? <laughs> horse didn't do anything. When asked if the horse wanted to join the fight to preserve slavery, the horse said, nay. <laughs> now, you can't see it on camera, but these people are about to rush the stage, put me on their shoulders, and march me onto Broadway as the champion of all jokes right now. <laughs> Just for that trip. <laughs> security, security is holding them back. We can't get a shot of it. We can't get a we can't get a shot of it. Speaking, speaking of poorly thought out secessions, the UK is still suffering plenty of complications from Brexit. It's harder to import stuff from Europe for them now. 
So they're buying stuff from us instead. And now Italy has warned the UK America is feeding you counterfeit pasta. <laughs> Complaining that the U.S. firms use fancy labeling and Italian colors to try to pass for authentic Italian products. Hey, pump the Pomodoro, Paisano. <laughs> Are you saying American Italian food isn't authentic? Next, you're going to tell me that John isn't my real papa. <laughs> or that this guy isn't actually in charge of the specials. <laughs> this whole thing makes me sad because Italy is one of my favorite places in the world. So in the spirit of international harmony and me being able to eat gelato with George Clooney at Lake Como, I want to invite all the Italians watching to join me in the Italy cam. Buongiorno. Benvenuto alla camera d'Italiano. It's me, Mario. I mean, Stefano. We hear you're a bit mad about the Stati Uniti selling the knockoff macaroni, but as they say in your beautiful country, when you're here, you're family. So, why not join your friends in England and try some of our finest, authentic Italian recipes, like a tuna stone pizza, <laughs> or the flavor of a graveyard, or our delicious beefaroni, <laughs> just like a mama used to pasteurize, or this thing called the crazy calzone, in a misguided attempt to destigmatize mental illness. <laughs> Unlimited breadsticks, everyone! <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. My guests are journalist Chris Wallace and actress Holland Taylor, but when we come back, do emojis still mean what they used to? Also, what do emojis used to mean? Stick around.